You were watching Cap 13. On this episode of GTV, Fort Scott discontinues discussions of a merger with Pittsburgh State University. Plus, bullying, how one Pittsburgh State senior tries to combat this issue with sweetness. And how two PSU brothers connect through football. All that and more on this episode of GTV. Thanks for joining us for this edition of GTV. I'm Jessica Ruiz. And I'm Jasmine Kyle. The Pittsburgh community comes together to provide a safe trick-or-treat. And in the spirit of Halloween, the Parks and Recreation Committee hosts haunted tours. But first, in a surprising move Monday night, the Fort Scott Board of Trustees voted unanimously to veto the PSU-FSCC partnership discussions. These discussions were based primarily on how to integrate the two schools. Many of Fort Scott's programs have campuses in Crawford County, which is primarily the Pittsburgh and Frontenac cities. Fort Scott students take classes on, on Pittsburgh's campus as well as live in the dorms and eat in the cafeteria. While it would seem that integrating the schools would be beneficial for both sides, the decision to stop the discussions for the time being and for the foreseeable future was based on the fact that Fort Scott wanted to be able to retain their identity. There was also much confusion on who would report to who if the integration would take place, and many were not comfortable with the idea of going forward with so much confusion still surrounding the idea. It is likely that discussions will continue eventually, perhaps in several years. Studying abroad is a hot topic for incoming freshmen. The opportunity to go overseas and experience a different culture while still earning credits is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Information about the study abroad programs here at Pittsburgh State is available in 118 Whitesit and on Wednesday, October 30th, there was an additional information session in the Governor's Room in the Overman Student Center. The Fort State area is one that is consistently teeming with wildlife, and as the leaves change, excitement for upcoming hunting seasons grows as well. Here's a look at one local business that is looking to assist local hunters. October 8th marked the first day early firearms can be used to hunt in Kansas, and local businesses like John's Sports Center are gearing up to accommodate the increase in customers who visit from across the four states. Do the math and everything, it's becoming cheaper to hunt around here than it is out in western Kansas. With such an increase in the number of hunters in the area, the dangers are obvious. The National Safety Council reported that in 2011 alone, there were approximately 600 unintentional fatalities. Adam Garglietti, manager of John Sports Center, has some helpful tips for area hunters to use to minimize their risk of becoming one of these statistics. The golden rule, know what's beyond your target. This will help identify somebody what's beyond their target when they're field hunting. We also want to make sure for sure, too, that we have good current safety equipment so that if we are in a tree, we need some kind of restraint that has a current system, that has a bungee cord to reduce the shock if you do fall. So that if you fall, you're safe and you're protected the whole time throughout the, the climb and the descent both. We want to make sure for your 2013 hunt, not just to have good eye and ear protection, but we want to not practice, only practice with it, but wear it in the field also. So like Smith Optics, they're going to keep your eyes safe from not only the sun glare, but in case there's any danger or any fragments from a shotgun, and then also good ear protection, preferably an electronic pair of ear protection so that we can hear and talk in a normal tone and identify if somebody is downrange, if there's any scenario happening, we'll be able to hear at a normal rate, but then they'll cut out when the firearm is shot. So we'll always be protected both on the eyes and on the ears. Be ready for the hunt. And never forget the Ten Commandments. We need to keep in mind the Ten Commandments of shooting always. Make sure that our muzzles always point in a safe direction. Never rely on the gun safety. The number one safety is yourself and your finger off the trigger. Make sure that we're using the correct ammo and the correct rifle and that we double check it all the time. Don't trust just because it's off a shelf. That's the correct ammo. Look at the chamber, look at the ammo, make sure they match up together. Some helpful tips to make this hunting season both enjoyable for enthusiasts and safe for all. For more information on hunting in Southeast Kansas, visit the Kansas Department of Wildlife Association's website. This year, the Transitions Conference will be hosted at Pittsburgh State University in the Technology Center. The event will be hosted November 15th from 8 to 4 p.m. The conference will provide hands-on experience for students in many programs, including automotive, graphic technology, and broadcast video editing, and many more. The Technology Center is hoping to get a lot of support from the student body to represent Pittsburgh State University among the other colleges attending. Basically, it's going to bring in educators and students from 
around the state of Kansas as well as Arkansas, Oklahoma, um, and Missouri and bring them in and have different sessions on anything from wood technology to um, communications and broadcasting. Um, we're going to have a track in automotive through the automotive technology department. And then we're going to have the IGAEA, which is uh, the International Graphic Arts Education Association conference here. Coming up next, we'll have a special Halloween edition of Around the Town. And how two student organizations are raising funds for Special Olympics. grown food? How about some home-baked goodies? Want to try some new recipes with some fresh herbs? Then the Farmer's Market of Pittsburgh, Kansas is here for you. The crops are fresh, the prices are fair, and the locals are as friendly as ever. The market is open from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Wednesdays and from 7.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturdays. So why not come on down and help support your community? to glory as the twenties roared. I wept with you through dust and want, gave courage through dark years of war, and then came peace, and we laughed wholeheartedly once again. Halloween, downtown Pittsburgh lit up with many Halloween festivities. More than 20 student organizations dressed up for its annual safe trick-or-treat for both kids and adults. This event includes candy, games, and of course a costume contest. It was hosted to provide children a thrilling yet safe, fun-filled night. Many businesses in downtown Pittsburgh also participated in Halloween festivities, including the Pittsburgh Art Walk. The Art Walk allowed Pittsburgh residents to show off their different styles of art along Broadway. Art styles ranged from traditional paint to music and dance. Live bands were also set up in Europe Park to give guests a real musical treat as bands rotated every hour. People looking for a good scare this Halloween season may find just what they're looking for as Pittsburgh welcomes a new haunted tour. GTV's Maggie Votes has more. Um, anyway, okay. Pittsburgh Parks and Recreation is currently hosting Stage Fright Haunted Tours a fresh addition to Halloween festivities in the area. The tour, which takes place in the Pittsburgh Municipal Auditorium, has been in production since late August of this year. We are having a, a committee meeting for the playground, and um, we were discussing another fundraiser, and somebody just popped up and said, you know, we've got an event coming up, or a, you know, a Halloween whatever coming up, we ought to do something in conjunction with that. At that point, we, we, it kind of came up and said, why not a haunted house? The Parks and Recreation Committee has received much aid from local sponsors and volunteers throughout the duration of the planning process. We've had a lot of sponsor help between advertisement, which is a big part of it. Just getting the, the, word, of, the word of the event out. We've had um, like product, other product sponsors with sheets and mannequins and different things. We've had a lot of people surprise us coming on with this. The tour spans 13 rooms, each of which follows a different theme. In addition, it will involve the efforts of 32 actor participants each night. Members of the Parks and Recreation Committee are already making plans for a similar tour event for next year's Halloween season. 
knowing that we plan for this to already be an annual event, next year we'll just start planning out even further in advance. We'll be adding to it more characters, um, probably some different themes, but we'll probably keep a lot of the themes too with the different rooms. And when we get done, I'm sure we'll brainstorm on what we liked, what we didn't like, and how we can make it better. For GTV, I'm Maggie Votes. Stage Fright Haunted Tours began October 30th and will continue through November 1st. Tickets for this event are $10 per person. Children under the age of 11 should be accompanied by an adult. Every year, two organizations dedicate 72 hours to non-stop teeter-totter. Pi Kappa Alpha and Alpha Sigma Alpha set up in the Oval with the goal to raise $2,000 for Southeast Kansas Special Olympics, during which they have several events to help them reach their goal, all in the name of charity. The teetering stops at 5 tonight. We spoke with Pi Kappa Alpha President Jason Jones to see how the event was coming along this year. Alpha Sigma Alpha and Pi Cap Alpha are out in the Oval this week for 72 hours. Uh, we are teeter-tottering to raise money for the Southeast Kansas Special Olympics team. Uh, we got a bake sale going on this week, Pi a Pi, a couple of pretty cool giveaways. Uh, the weather hasn't been super great this week, but we're making the most of it and having a good time. So, uh, really good event. We're excited to be out here. New York Times number one best-selling author and inspirational speaker Michael Hingson will be gracing the stage at Pittsburgh's Memorial Auditorium Friday, November 1st at 7.30 p.m. Hingson, blind since birth, worked on the 78th floor of one of the first towers hit during 9-11. Hingson and Rozelle, his seeing dog, safely got out. Michael Hingson tells their story in the book Thunder Dog, which he will be signing and selling after his presentation at Memorial Auditorium. The event is open to the public and tickets are free. Tickets for the event will be located at the ticket office located in the Weed Athletic Building. For more information on Michael Hingson, the Hingson visit, the website michaelhingson.com. Up ahead on GTV, we'll look at how some high school students are trying to stop bullying. And in sports, two brothers bond through playing football. precious resources we have. We're only hurting ourselves and our planet. So to make sure that all living things on this earth endure, we have to utilize our resources carefully. Join the sustainability movement. Visit www.epa.gov slash sustainability slash basic info to learn more about sustainability. Students majoring in social work are starting their macro projects this semester. Jessica Collins is starting a fundraiser to support bully awareness and trying to make a difference in the community by selling baked goods and spreading the word to others. GTV's Ryan Ash has more. Bullying has always been a problem. However, students are trying to make an impact to help stop this issue. I met up with Jessica Collins, who is running a baked goods sale to try to combat this problem in a helpful and delicious way. Um, I'm with the social work department, and I'm hosting a macro project in Lamar, Missouri. Um, 
I am bringing in Stand for the Silent out of Oklahoma. They're an anti-bullying campaign organization. Um, Kirk and Laura Smalley are who are coming to speak. Um, their son actually committed bully side after two years of bullying. He was 11 years old, and that's how they got started into the organization. Um, they travel all over the United States. They do webcasts into other countries too um, to promote awareness on bullying. Um, my son was actually a victim of bullying. Um, he was bullied for three years within the school system and they never did anything despite the cops being involved. Um, one out of the three that were involved um, was charged with assault and bullying against my son and the school policy says that he was supposed to be expelled and he's never gotten anything. So I'm using this as a stepping stone to address the school board to implement um, a preventative program and an, a different policy within the school district. Um, we are raising funds to bring them in to Lamar. Um, the event's on November 8th is at the auditorium in Lamar, and um, we were going to do hula hooping, but can't do the hula hooping inside. Well, we have a little, but it's hard. So um, we're just trying to raise funds to bring them in. The event turned out to be a success due to many of the students stopping by and getting baked goods for themselves. By helping out the cause, hopefully more awareness will be brought to light about this serious issue. For GTV, I'm Ryan Ash. If you know a student or friend that needs help with a bullying issue, please contact the nearest teacher, parents, or even your local authorities to get them some help. Coming up in sports, Kyle Alaria gives us a look at two brothers on the Pitt State football team. And football highlights from the Pitt State Missouri Western game. The Office of Student Diversity has a mission, to build student relationships, to provide an environment welcome to all cultures here at PSU. The Office of Student Diversity provides seminars, diversity workshops, and support for student organizations, BSA, Hispanics of Today, and NASA. Come hang out with us. The Office of Student Diversity hopes to be your home away from home. Located in 203 Horace Mann. Looking for locally grown food? How about some home-baked goodies? Want to try some new recipes with some fresh herbs? Then the Farmer's Market of Pittsburgh, Kansas is here for you. The crops are fresh, the prices are fair, and the locals are as friendly as ever. The market is open from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Wednesdays and from 7.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturdays. So why not come on down and help support your community? to glory as the twenties roared. I wept with you through dust and want, gave courage through dark years of war, and then came peace, and we laughed wholeheartedly once again. Welcome back to GTV with your sports update, I'm Kyle Laria. It's a rare experience when two siblings get to play on the same collegiate sports team, but we caught up with brothers Israel and Isaac Masalera and they shared what it's like to play on the Pitt State football team together. For me, really just, you know, it's an honor to get to play with my big brother and like the last time we, you know, we played a season together, we won a state championship. So hopefully, you know, this year we're having a good season, so hopefully that look transfers over. And, you know, we got a good chance of winning a championship this year. So hopefully, you know, being with my brother can help in the situation. Yeah, we played with each other in high school, so we only played like two years together, which was my junior year and senior year. So it's just great to be out there and just be able to just critique each other and just be able to just, you know what I'm saying, work with each other outside of football also and just tell each other about the little things that we see about each other. 
And, you know, for me, just getting to walk over here, doing the gorilla walk, you know, before the game, you know, I walk with my brother, get to see all the fans and stuff, and then get to see, you know, the family at the end of the trail whenever we're about to go on the field, you know, it's just real cool. Before every game, we talk to each other pretty much, like, the whole time when we, you know, actually have, like, time to talk to each other outside, like, before games and stuff, and we're trying to motivate each other, talking about how we want to play for our family and stuff like that. The Gorillas kick off at 2 p.m. on Saturday, November 2nd, against the Northwestern Oklahoma State Rowdy Wranglers. A week after being limited to 27 net rushing yards, 12th ranked Pittsburgh State University pounded out 280 rushing yards en route to a 34-14 road win over number four Missouri Western State University Saturday, October 26th at Sprout Memorial Stadium. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that game. The Griffins of Missouri Western got their offense going with this touchdown pass from quarterback Travis Partridge to wide out Reggie Jordan. The duo had two scoring connections in this game. The Pitt State offense wasn't going to be outdone with running back Jeff Seabolt having 24 carries for 179 yards rushing, including this 23-yard run into the end zone. And, and he isn't even touched on this three-yard pitch for a score. The Gorilla defense swarmed to the football and made tackles while limiting the Griffins to 312 total yards and 14 points. Western entered the game averaging 442 yards and 46.3 points per game. The Gorillas will return to Carney Smith Stadium to host Northwestern Oklahoma State University in a non-conference game Saturday, November 2nd. The University of Kansas, the preseason number six team in NCAA Division I, built an 18-point halftime cushion against Pitt State en route to a 97-57 exhibition victory Tuesday, October 29th at Allen Fieldhouse. The Gorillas battled the Jayhawks through much of the first half, closing within a point at 21-20 before the defending Big 12 champions outscored Pitt State 31-12 to close out the half. KU expanded its margin to 65-38 with a 30-12 run and never looked back. Pitt State junior transfer Devin Branch had an impressive Pitt State debut, pouring in a game-high 27 points. Redshirt junior Alex Williams also scored in double figures with 15 points in his first action for the Gorillas. Williams scored 11 of his 15 points in the first half. Freshman guard Josh Gustafson and sophomore guard Jake Bullard chipped in with 7 and 5 points for the Gorillas. Pitt State will face a second Big 12 foe in exhibition action before opening regular season play when the Gorillas travel to Manhattan, Kansas to face Kansas State University Friday, November 1st. Tip-off is set for 8 p.m. at Brandlidge Coliseum. That's it for this week's GTV Sports Update. I'm Kyle Laria. Coming up next, we take a look at Pittsburgh's newest restaurant. Stick around. country is on life support. While more tax dollars are being allocated toward assistance programs such as food stamps, a large sum of the money is sold. The PSU Office of Alumni and Constituent Relations will host a contest to find the best chili and salsa in the area. Judging will begin at 11.30 a.m. and will be located in Gorilla Village. The winner will be announced prior to the game that evening. This contest is limited to 30 contestants, so get your entry in before 4 p.m. on November 1st. Tasting is free and open to the public. Call 620-235-4758 for more information or to sign up. People looking to get some good barbecue may just get lucky enough to try a new barbecue restaurant. Where everything's homemade, GTV's Israel Masalera has more. This time of the year, as the city of Pittsburgh prepares for fall, one eatery in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh is smoking up a good meal one rack at a time. I was in the tree service, uh, not a whole lot of people here, so we did a lot of work in Fort Scott, uh, Pet Pittsburgh, Pleasanton, Mound City, uh, pretty much all up and down 69. And then what we did was uh, just kind of go to businesses and talk to them and stuff like that too, and did work for companies. Um, there's just not enough people to keep busy, so uh, I figured the way the economy is and stuff like that, everybody eats, I'm a pretty good cook, so I thought I'd try the cooking out and sell the tree company off. Lucky 13 plans to expand their menu selection in the upcoming months by bringing in new, tasteful arrangements. Start bringing a lot more stuff in, involved. Uh, we're gonna probably start doing, um, during the winter time, stews and soups, uh, stuff like that. Chicken noodle soup, homemade stews. Um, just kind of mix it up where you can actually take like the meal home and actually have like a family 
you know, it's not just fast food to where you're just getting nothing but fast food. And then, I mean, we figured winter time, of course, that's going to be a slow time. Not, not many people want to sit out on the bench and eat. Uh, springtime starts coming around next year. Uh, we're going to start doing a lot more involvement uh, with the, the, the town itself. Uh, we're going to fix up this out here a little bit more than what it is right now. Um, this was just kind of quick, get up, get everybody to know us, let them try our food out. Hopefully they really like it and they'll keep coming back. And then we're going to uh, hopefully own a couple of these. Uh, that's what I want to do. I'd like to have one in uh, Gerard and in Fort Scott. And uh, it just kind of depends too, though. I mean, if we do really well here, which is what I want to do, we're just going to stay right here. So If you're looking for a great meal that is lucky for both your stomach and your wallet, Lucky 13 is a lucky bet for college students. Uh, we feed a lot of college kids uh, and I, we try to make our prices really um, really fair for what you're getting or how much food you are going to get and everything's homemade and it, that takes a little bit more time you know than like other chains and stuff like that because you drive through the drive through and you know it's already frozen package they throw it on the grill you know it's done here we actually take a lot of time and a lot of effort in everything we make uh, the homemade fries, the sweet potato fries, we, we, we do a Parmesan garlic uh, style stuff, on, cheese on them. Uh, like I said, we make all of our rubs, all the barbecue sauce, uh, potato salad, all that's homemade, so it takes a lot of time. For a good meal, most will not complain about the appetizing food the eatery plans to fill our stomachs with. For GTV, I'm Israel Masalera. Sounds like some good stuff. So have you tried out Lucky 13 yet? I haven't yet. You know, after such a cold, rainy day, that would really hit the spot, some soup. You're right, a bowl of hot tomato soup sounds perfect on a day like this. Well, that does it for this week's edition of GTV. Be sure to check us out on Facebook. Just search GTV or go to facebook.com slash GTV Caps 13. Also, visit us on Twitter at Caps underscore 13. We'll be tweeting live during broadcasts all season. Have an idea for a story? Let us know. Hashtag GTV. Stay tuned for more great programming on Caps 13 and enjoy the rest of your day. Sustainability is the capacity to endure. And when we waste what little precious resources we have, we're only hurting ourselves and our planet. So to make sure that all living things on this earth endure, we have to utilize our resources carefully. Join the sustainability movement. Visit www.epa.gov slash sustainability slash basic info to learn more about sustainability. The preservation of our earth starts with you. You are watching CAPS 13, PSU's only cable channel.